Good morning, stock traders, and welcome back to Stock Traders Talk Radio. I'm your host, Stock Sumo. Thanks for joining us on this. Wacky Wednesday, June twentieth. You know what time it is, folks. It's time to top off your cup of coffee here with Stock Traders Talk Radio as we look through the markets. Open up your charts, turn on those scanners, and fire up your trading accounts. Joining us on this morning's program is my buddy from the Twin Cities, Haas. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Sue Mao? I'm just glad someone on this show actually knows where I live, cares about me enough to learn about my personal life a little bit. I hear you had a uh, pretty sweet golf tournament yesterday, man. Oh, man, I had a great time, but I missed the radio show. I tell you what, I can't really enjoy a golf tournament when I'm not on the radio show and I'm, I'm checking stocks on my, <laughs> my app, on my iPhone, and I'm looking at quotes, and I'm like, man, it, it really screwed up the first part of my round. Then I put the phone down and I said, you know what? I'm not going to look and see what stocks are doing today. I'm just going to focus on golf. And then I ended up golfing better. Oh, it's tough in this day and age as a stock trader. We got all these phones with the internet and stuff. And you're always thinking about your stocks and your portfolio, especially when you're involved with it as you are or someone like me. Sometimes you just got to set all those mobile things down and just freaking enjoy yourself, man. That's right, man. I, I, I'm giving my wrist a break, too. I'm done. I'm, I'm taking some time off of golf and I'm going to take a couple weeks and take take a break because my wrist needs to heal. Dang man, that sucks. Yeah, I heard it on the at the driving range a couple weeks back and uh unfortunately I I've, <laughs> I've been playing on it because I I was really looking forward to this tournament and I wanted to get all geared up and I could tell yesterday when I was hitting the ball that I just don't have the strength in my wrist that I used to. So I got to take a little break, let this thing heal and uh come back in a couple weeks you hear that sippy we got uh sumo has injuries from golf wow <laughs> hey That's, i'm not um, i'm not <laughs> i've heard of throwing out your back done that myself trying to do a tiger swing but a uh, limp wrist huh that's a new one yeah I just... I've, actually, I've actually had stitches from golf before i uh Oh man, you want to hear a messed up story? All right, I got a couple stories. I'm gonna let you finish, <laughs> but you're you're you you got my uh, thought juices flowing, and I got a couple uh, of th stories to share. He was born like this, Haas. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I want to hear him. No, I uh, I used to have quite a temper on the golf course when I was a uh, young kid because I was really serious about it and I golfed every day and I thought I was professional, and I. Uh, kind of got pissed and snapped something over my knee and it kind of dug in a little too deep a little bit of bone sticking out so <laughs> ouch yeah also had stitches from bowling Stop. I, uh, yeah i sort of uh fell on my ball i was actually a decent bowler too so fell on <laughs> your ball. I haven't, uh, but i haven't wow. had stitches from hockey basketball football none of those just golf and bowling Except for the time in hockey, you, you had your lip almost removed, but you refused to get stitches. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that goes with my story that I wanted to get into. One time I was, I was golfing at this course. It was an executive course, um, so it wasn't a full-length course. It was, you know, they had par threes and a couple par fours. Uh, and one of the holes goes, like, parallel with the other hole. One hole's going one way and the other hole's coming back at it. So uh, apparently somebody hit their drive and this poor old lady got hit right in the face and it knocked her lip right off. And then wow. the, the paramedics came and they put it on ice and they took it to the hospital when they took her in the ambulance. And they, I guess they were going to sew it back on. But man, what a, what a shocking experience as a kid. I was only like 12 or 13 years old and I was like, horrified I, will, I was like i didn't want to go golfing like the rest of the summer no it wasn't that bad but it was pretty shocking that's man, crazy man you guys got a good golf store this morning somebody tell me about an eagle or something this is depressing <laughs> the guys that i was golfing with yesterday it was a two-man scramble 
Um, the other team, I wish we were paired up with them. I wish it was a four-man scramble, but they had a couple of Eagles. They were hitting the ball really good. The one guy was a, a member of a really pristine course here, and the other, the other guy had worked at one of the really nice courses here uh, for like five years. So you could tell they just had a, you know, a lot of practice, and they just had just a natural, nice swing. No effort. Sweet, man. All right, enough about me and my golf stories. Why don't we get into some action and talk about stocks? Because I'm sure that's what all the listeners are waiting for. We got a bunch of people in the chat room. If you want to call up, you're more than welcome to give us a shout. And the the call in number is 347 215 7181. Feel free to call in and share your thoughts. We'd love to talk about it on radio. But without any further ado, Haas, I'm going to pass it over to you and you can start us up for what we got for the day. Well, uh, before we do that, welcome to the show, Sifi. I uh, sort of inadvertently uh, introduced you there, but uh, oh, we, we, we... Brother. <laughs> all right, we'll roll with some stocks. One that came across a lot of people's radars. I'm not going to do a specific spotlight this morning, by the way, people. I do have a few that are on my very, very active watch list that I want some people to be looking at today, though. So we will do some very brief overviews of these stocks that I kind of got my eyes on right now. I'm sure a few of these hit a lot of people's scanners yesterday. The first one I want to talk about is Paradigm Oil and Gas. The ticker is PDGO. And we actually talked about LHPT. I said I was starting to watch that one yesterday. Uh, They put out some news. And within that press release, they were talking about some joint ventures with Paradigm Oil and Gas. Uh, and stupid me didn't go and actually look for the other ticker uh, in the other half of the press release. Uh, I'm not sure if the actual PDGO was in that other press release. I might have thought it was a private company or something, but uh, I don't know. I got distracted or something, but let's check out that press. It was actually released on Monday here. Um, Paradigm Oil and Gas Incorporated announces that Mr. Todd Violet has been appointed as its new CEO. Mr. Violet expands his current role as CEO of Lighthouse Petroleum Incorporated to explore joint venture and merger opportunities. Uh, So now this Mr. Todd Violet is the CEO of both Paradigm Oil and Gas and Lighthouse Petroleum. And both of these companies have fairly... Uh, nice share structures, and we'll check out the PDGO share structure in about two seconds here. Uh, but this one, as you can see on the chart right here from yesterday, uh, got pretty hot from 004 to 007. Uh, just taking a brief look at Didi Amanda over here. We see that there's not a lot of activity over the course of the last little while, the last few months. And then 618 Monday, got about a $15,000 day, bumping up a little bit. And then you got a $61,000 day yesterday, bumping from 0038 to 0077 with a nice big fat green candle and a little breakout going on there with some uh, higher accumulation on the new CEO news. People waiting on pending JV news or some sort of Uh, news related to some of the oil and gas properties that this company plans to bring in. So uh, let's just go check out one of the sticky posts that I want to check out because uh, there was actually a conference call with this company and I believe um, Lighthouse Petroleum as well and Plano Penny. Sorry about that. I got some stuff popping up on the screen here. Uh, Plano Penny on the iHub. Gives us a nice little outline of that conference call. We have Todd V, CEO. PDGO is an oil and gas company with a total of 106 wells, 13 of which are pending with the Texas RR Commission for saltwater disposal. Uh, Old management was lackluster, to say the least. New CEO was announced this week, bringing his operator and director from Lighthouse Petroleum. They turned them around in just six months into an oil producing company. They plan on using multiple strategies to extract the oil. I'm not a professional, so I don't know oil well. Uh, I'm sure different sorts of fracking techniques uh, and the likes of those. Uh, Plans on merging the two companies, LHPD, PT and PDGO, 
Uh, they need to go through filings and such to figure out how to get it done in the best possible way. Uh, that's very interesting, merging LHPT and PDGO, which would actually make a whole lot of sense, to be honest with you, uh, especially if they're considering joint venture opportunities and they have the same management. Hmm. Sounds pretty promising there. Lots of speculation going on there and into the future there. I uh, guarantee it. Outstanding share count of PDGO, 113 million shares. Authorized 300 million. I believe the float is much smaller than that. And don't, he doesn't look like he states it here. But uh, no shares are able to be issued due to default filings. Uh, those filings are in process and will be sent to auditors, lawyers, and will take about two weeks. Uh, so that should be coming up here pretty soon. Uh, there are a few creditors, one at 200000 and a few smaller ones. They are working with them to restructure. So they're restructuring debt. Always a positive sign. Hopefully they restructure it in a way that is beneficial to shareholders. Auditor is Turner Stone, Dallas, Texas. Website will be updated shortly with all property owned by PDGO. So lots of positive stuff going on with this PDGO LHPT combo. Um, and there's gonna be some major restructuring going on as some of these filings come out and they consider a merger with LHPT. It's gonna be lots of speculation flying, real nice share structure for a sub penny stock in the oil and gas industry, especially one with some producing wells. Um, very interested to see what sort of filings start popping out here in the near future. Started heating up yesterday. I think she's got more to go. I don't know if she'll take a dip and consolidate a little bit today, but there's definitely some eyes moving to the stock. So put your eyes on it now, put it on your level two screen. Uh, definitely gonna be some opportunities to make some money on this one in the near term. All right, that's my little bit on PDGO for the morning. Let's see what other ones I got to talk about here. Uh, I mentioned this one yesterday. Check out a chart with uh, uh, WTWO, W2 Energy. Uh, we talked a little bit about the chart on this one, actually. And I just want to bring this one up. You want to check out a chart of radar. PDGO real quick, Cos, with Sumo? Sure. If you got it up, man, go for it. Yeah, take it away, Sumo. Okay, let's take a look at this chart real quick. All right. You can see that the RSI is really cranked up in the power zone. Once it broke through the 50 overlay here, she never looked back, just kept going north, punched through the 50 line, and now she went through the 70 mark. So it's up in the power zone nicely. So that's why we've seen this big breakout yesterday, opened at the low a day, closed at the high a day. That's a lot of strength. Got through this major uh, resistance here, which is a 100 day moving average it's at 006 I'd like to see it hold above this 100 day moving average as support so 006 is going to be a key level of support I like how the 20 day moving average is starting to curl up and kiss the 50 day so I'd like to see that 20 day keep going north nice big volume bar here yesterday I want to see the volume you know continue to stay uh, consistent I'd like to see a trade above five to 10 million shares, you know, that'd be a really nice volume day like it had here these past couple days. We gotta keep the momentum going. Uh, that'll, that'll look good. Notice that the PPO recently had a crossover and the blue bars on the histogram are flipped to the top side. So all these indicators are cranked up, looking good. You got that slow stow up in the power zone as well. And that had recently punched through that 50 overlay. You can see that. And uh, the thing is just showing a lot of strength all around. Key thing is we want to see it hold these support levels. It's got to hold the 100-day uh, moving average here at 006. If it doesn't hold that, the next support level it's got to hold is going to be uh, 005. And we definitely uh, don't want to see it dip below uh, this previous day's close here. So this would be around uh, 0038. So that'll be uh, what we're going to be looking at moving forward on PDGO. Nice, sounds good, man. Yeah, I got a uh, a few other ones that I want to bring to attention today. Fantastic chart, by the way. I really like that stock going into the future here. Uh, even at current prices, if you're a little, got a little bit of patient money to uh, bid sit. Uh, W two Energy, as I mentioned, I mentioned this one yesterday on the show. Uh, we took a little look at the chart yesterday on the show. Um, 
Yesterday pretty much stayed about break even throughout the day. A little bit of a dip, a little bit of a bump, but ended up pretty close to even, closing at double zero eight four. Uh, briefly looking at Didi Amanda for WTWO. We can see that it had a big green candle on Monday, about $12,000 traded. Then we had about $20,000 yesterday, closing at break even, that double zero eight four mark, but definitely some accumulation going on. Uh, around this double zero seven to double zero eight area. And I want to bring this one to your attention because I'm hearing some chatter, some rumor chatter. Not pulling the hoss on on it, but some rumor chatter. So I would keep your eyes on it. I'm hearing that there's some big news on the way. So just uh, just wanted to point that out. Um, anyways, let's check out another one that kind of got hot late in the day yesterday. Internet Array, sticker I-N-A-R, quad lotto play. I know some of you out there love these types of plays. I actually do too every now and again. Uh, Internet Array, they did put out some press at 1.59 p.m. yesterday, so let's check that out. Internet Array Incorporated reported that its subsidiary, Nubis Incorporated's economic, e economies of scale, have led to a 25% increase in sales with a stronger than expected sales margin. The result of expansion that began with the opening of a development office in Dhaka, Bangladesh, in conjunction with establishing new sales channels through key partnerships. Um, so, INAR, Subpenny, Triple Zero, Lotto. I believe the float is actually pretty small. The outstanding share count is over a billion shares. Outstanding says 1.45 billion right here. I believe that's actually pretty close. Um, but the float is much smaller. I believe over 50% of that is owned by insiders, if I remember correctly. Um, and this one started to heat up a little bit yesterday. Let's check out the dollar volume on it because I haven't even actually looked at that. Uh, 13,000 it looks like. I uh, did see triple zero fives briefly, but I just saw the uh, the accumulation starting to creep up here. You can see the dollar volumes are increasing slowly yet, but enough to bring it to people's attention. Uh, and, you know, uh, this one moves pretty easy when it gets some volume. So I got my eyes on that one today. But remember, it's a lotto. It's a quad play. It's down here for a reason, so be careful. All right. One last one that I definitely want to get in before the day actually starts here. Ticker is F-E-G-R, Friendly Energy Exploration. Uh, chatter on the board started to increase on this one yesterday. And there are some also some rumors floating about this one that they're putting out some big press in the near future. So keep your eyes out for that. But again, as you can see on DD Amanda over the course of the last week or so, definitely some accumulation going on. Uh, this one's kind of been hammered down from uh, up in the penny ranges all the way down to what looks like around double zero one two bottom right here. Uh, looks like double zero one two is actually the lowest that it touched. And this is when the accumulation started increasing, with, which uh, kind of brought it on the radars. And then I saw the dollar volume hit 40,000 yesterday, as you can see. Uh, touched a high of double zero two five from those uh, double zero one two lows. And so definitely want to put your eyes on this one and see if that still keeps creeping up, if the accumulation continues, uh, especially if they put out some sort of press. It looks like it's forming a nice little bottom here uh, as long as they're not planning on any sort of near-term dilution, which is also possible. So, again, be careful. Uh, but this one, I don't believe they put out a whole lot of press recently. Uh, they're testing, you know, some, some of their different leases, uh, oil and gas leases, but, uh, you know, other than that, people are just speculating right now. That was all the way back in March. Uh, they did put out a quarterly report recently, but uh, people are just kind of waiting on news and speculating. It looks like it's forming a bottom down here, so I definitely want to bring that one to your attention, too. Uh, why don't we actually look at a chart on this one, F-E-G-R. Uh, I just want to get an idea of what sort of uh, resistance points, support points we might find if it starts to come up. sure if I lost the boys or what but uh hmm looks like it's just me
Haas lost. Sumo lost. Just Siffy. And Sumo's down. Looks like uh, I'll go to my own charts. Let's talk about Apple. Okay. Sumo, your connection sucks. Let's see. Let's call Haas back. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Hmm. Nobody's picking up. Oh well. I'm running the show by myself. Let's look at Apple. 588.20. Good deal here. Uh, I wanted this thing to gap up, but there was no really reason to it. I'm in the June $600 call. It closed at uh, 93 cents. We've been playing this one for the last few days. Let's see if we can call Haas back here. I don't know what happened to these guys. Come on, boys. Are we back? <laughs> We're back. Sumo, Are we on the show uh, still? That was funny. I, he must have been having issues because you were going, and I was like, trying to get him ready to do the chart but uh he wasn't going and then right when you said the chart then i seen him scrambling for it and then he was gone <laughs> are we on the show right yeah, now we're on the show i never I left i was still to going our listeners oh yeah i heard uh big Vic. he could hear you yeah, anyways i'm here um <laughs> what's going on ziffy no i got some uh news we can go over if you just want yeah, to roll let's with go that. back let's go back to haas you know i love just kicking back and listening Back to you, no, boss. No, of course you do. You just go make some sweet trades, All and right. uh, you can just give me a little piece if you want. No big deal. All right, I know a hot stock that people want to hear about. HBRM or Borium Group, uh, 0048. This one definitely has cooled off since its major, major run, but I don't think she's quite done yet because they got some real good press and real good deals in the works. Let's go over the press today. Herborium Group begins commercialization of its sexual health products to enter the $3.5 billion market. I always love when companies put the size of the market in there versus the size of the market and the piece they expect to get. Makes it sound sexy. Uh, Herborium Group, a botanical therapeutics company, announces today that it has begun manufacturing its new sexual health product line for women and men. Herborium proprietary products will launch in the fall of 2012, in coordination with the promotion of a unique Kama Sutra Vodka product with natural herbs provided by Herborium and developed based on a know-how associated with the company's sexual health formulations. Kama Sutra LLC is a U.S. partner of a German Bismarck premium brands, uh, blah, blah, blah. But uh, in addition to revenue sharing, and licensing fees to be received by Herborium Group in association with Kama Sutra Vodka Beverage. Herborium plans on leveraging Kama Sutra's promotional strategy linked to Herborium's sexual health product line that provides unprecedented exposure and promotional opportunities for Herborium women and men products. Very positive news there for Herborium Group. I'm very excited for their vodka products, sex-infused vodka to hit the market. I would love to be a test pilot for them because I like my vodka, especially sex-infused vodka. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Anyways, that's our Borium group for you. We'll see how that news affects the stock in the market today. Stock that's been getting lots of chatter. I believe a large promotional campaign is about to start on it. Web Safety Incorporated. We've talked about this one a lot on the show as well. Um, they have their child protection mobile applications, whatever you want to call them. They put out some press post-market yesterday. I believe they might have actually put out some press today, too. Uh, yesterday announced that Web Safety will be marketing its mobile phone child protection parental notification software to mobile posses, smartphone customers, beginning June 19th, 2012. Let's check out if they actually put out some more press today, because I think they did. Uh, WBSI messages. 
Nope, same press as yesterday. Screw it. All right. Ticker DNAD. Another stack that we talked about a lot on this show. DNA Dynamics putting out some press this morning. DNA Dynamics Incorporated, a global developer and publisher of mobile video games, is pleased to report that its newest mobile point and click adventure game, The Naked Gun, ICUP, was recently featured as the app of the day on Apps Fire and as new and noteworthy in the Apple App Stores in the US, Argentina, Australia, Bolivia, and a bunch of other countries. So, pretty good news right there. I miss Sumo already, Siffy. What are we gonna do? I'm back. Sumo's back. He's back. What's going on, buddy? Where'd you go? All of a sudden, my internet boots out, and I was like, what the heck? Right, Ringy, you're like, Sumo, are you there for a chart? I was about to come in, and then my internet kicked out, and then I had to restart my modem because I, I, I don't know what, what happened. It was like, and then I, I got my stuff back on, and I restarted it. I thought it was going to work right away, and it took a couple minutes, but I don't know what happened there. But can't, You can never count on Time Warner. Yeah, no doubt not. <laughs> We're just going over some news here, pre-market, in your absence. So we'll just continue with that for a little bit here before the market opens. Uh, UBRG, Universal Bioenergy, we talked about their press yesterday. They put out more press this morning, closed at 0095 yesterday. Universal Bioenergy Incorporated, a publicly traded, independent, diversified energy company. Uh, announced today has made plans to accelerate the company's growth and expansion, increase revenues and profitability. And profitability is definitely this company's main issue. I believe they have freaking like 75 million in revenues already. So uh, they definitely need to increase the profit margins if they don't want to be a pen sub penny stock any longer. Uh, the company is planning to take strategic steps to continually improve its financial performance with a sharp focus on increasing net earnings, reiterating that little point there. Company's acquisitions team is in high-level talks with several companies in the energy industry for potential acquisitions. So, speculatively positive news slash fluff for Universal Bioenergy this morning. All right, we got a bell. It's 8.30. Let's go check. Well, 9.30 Eastern time. Let's check out some uh, level two action. What's well, Arna trading at this morning? Oh, just just over ten bucks. That's unfortunate. You guys know anything about Vringo Incorporated? V R N G. It's an Amex stock. This thing's had massive, massive run. You watch that one at all, Sid? I haven't. I I've heard about it. I just haven't. I haven't really paid much attention to it. Yeah, that one's been uh, decent, definitely. Oh yeah. Ouch. WBSI, this is the one we just mentioned on news. Big promotional watch, so keep in mind that there's probably some shares and cash issued out there. Yeah, we put a, uh, a video chart on this one. Siffy and I did about six tickers the other night. Uh, it was the night before last, right, Siffy? Right. So, uh, yeah, WBSI was in the mix. We put it out the night before last. We were looking at a bunch of charts and seeing what was buzzing and so forth. And that was one of the ones in the mix. So uh, be sure to check that video out. You can see that we called it, uh, I don't know, it was low two cent range. So already up 50% from when we identified it in that video. So nice, nice call there, Sippy. Mahalo. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to uh, form a nice little base here at three cents. And as I mentioned, probably on promotion, so be careful out there. You know, it's got a decent little chart uh, that had a big update yesterday. Is this uh, liquid metal LQMT? Remember, I was talking about it a while back and uh, talked about how it could make some good moves, and it's made a couple of good moves since I first started talking about it. I believe I started talking about it in. 
the middle of May, and it was coming down. It was trading in the low 20s and uh, had a run up to 37.5 cents, came down, found support at 25.5 cents, and then yesterday ran up to like 36 cents. So it's been making some nice moves. I really like the, the activity on this liquid metal, LQMT. Nice. Yeah, my level two is definitely loading slow here, but I can see it on my screen. I'm looking at Paradigm Oil and Gas, PDGO right now. This thing gapped to 1.3 cents. I don't know uh, what fool bought 100,000 shares at 1.3 cents out of the gates, but market makers definitely taking advantage right there. Uh, 0094 by 0095 spread right now. Last trade, 0095 up 23.4%. Early on, 208,000 traded so far. HBRM slightly hot out of the gates here. Uh, 005 by 0051. We just talked about that. Pretty decent news. But there's sex infused vodka. Me and Sumo have had her uh, fair share of friendly conversations about that on the radio show. <laughs> 366,000 shares traded so far of 4.2%. <laughs> Thank God you didn't just end that sentence with. Me and Sumo have had our fair shares of friendly conversations over a cold glass of. <laughs> I was getting scared there for a second, man. Thank God, Haas. I've said worse things. <laughs> you know, sit back, uh, oh, hang out with the on. boys, drinking sex-infused vodka. Top of my to-do list. That's funny stuff right there man we got bids creeping up on wbs side uh, definitely some people looking to push this one higher keep your eyes on her Haas must have been on mute for that odd moment of silence huh sumo what uh, what odd moment of silence there was just like this odd moment of silence after i was talking about you guys uh drinking extravaganza oh Gee, no well, so, see, someone told me to okay, pull that's... up pearl and i was like there's no trades on pearl why would you tell me to pull up pearl Come on, Hobbs. You're killing me on here. These guys. Yeah, Look at the gap guys. up on Gevo. G-E-V-O. This thing had a big uh, move today. It, it uh, was as low as 748. Hit a high at 944. Wow. Uh, yep. It looks like we got a uh, California Grapes International. Ticker C-A-G-R. This one, as uh, a listener has mentioned, has been pumped and dumped a few times already. Uh, so be careful and keep that in mind. Looks like it's getting some action early on this morning on some more press. They also put out press yesterday. Uh, just under 9 million shares traded so far today. Last trade, 0014, up 7.7% on the day. Was hitting 0015s for a little while there, but it looks like we got some sellers stepping in now. PDGO, 0094 by 0097 spread now. This one's a thin one. Is it just me or do we keep losing Haas? Losing me? Yeah, I keep losing, like it goes silent. I see your thing uh, lighting up like you're talking, but I don't hear you. I uh, hear him. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I was quiet there for a little while. I'm just like sneaky quiet. Sneaky I have this ninja slith hops. slithery way about me, so mm. don't, don't let it fool you. Don't let it PDGO fool you. looks like it wants to get back above a penny here after that uh, gap up. It came down a little bit, filled the gap slightly, uh, but back to 0099, offer being hit. Oof, Beggar taking a dip. A dip. All right, let's check on... Uh, WTWO not looking too good either. Oh, Come on, okay. let's find her. S A P X, four cents. <laughs> oh, oh my god! I thought this thing was going to a dollar. What happened? Hey. No, this this thing's four cents and it's in the green by eight percent, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are the lows of the year on this? I think it was just that like so something funny, just a little man. while ago. Oh boy, 
here we go. Here's one that's up. CFGX. Talk to me, Haas. Capital Financial Global. Breaking through its 200 MA on a daily chart. Zero right, I'm gonna go out. one three oh, nine sorry. zero one four. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb on this one, and say that we talked about it last week, and no guarantees. We're gonna go check it in a second, but I'm just gonna see if I remember this one. I think I re remember reading a press release about these guys owning some sort of mining operation, CFGX. We're gonna go check that out. Let's see if my memory serves me right. Insurance on pipeline fingers. Yes. Capital Financial Global engages IBK Capital to raise $3 million for distressed St. Louis gold mine. Bomb. But as far as news that they put out, looks like yesterday post-market. Let's check that out. That's probably why it's getting some action today. PDGO broke above a penny. Here we go. 0101 by 013. Another perfectly timed Haas punch. Love it when yeah. you do these little spotlights. <laughs> well, it's just you, you need to find these patterns about companies kind of coming out of the woodwork and right, right time speculation and momentum building. Uh, you know, if you can catch that first big day of volume and momentum building, you can usually find a good 20 or 30 percent the next day early on for sure. And that one's a really thin share. Um, so keep that in mind, but they're definitely going to be putting out some press and filings related to a potential merger with LHPT and also just updating their financials. Obviously, they just popped that new CEO in place, so I'm sure he's pretty eager to talk and tell his shareholders what he plans to do uh, after that conference call. Yeah, we should try to call him up. Where are they out of? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Maybe we could do like a combined PDGO LHPT interview or something like that i think that would be good uh be anyway oh man yeah. they got the old skull and crossbones i was going to try to look them up real fast <laughs> pdgo does but it's the same ceo as uh lhpt so you might be able to find it through there okay I there believe, we go i believe lhpt is more uh updated with its filings and stuff like that so uh let's see here Looks like uh, that CFGX SIFI. Let's go over that press real quick. Then we can move on. Capital Financial Global Incorporated released updated figures today for its insurance lending unit. As of today, there is $16.4 million of loans in process, which corresponds to approximately $328,000 in estimated revenue for the company. So a nice little bit on potential revenues there for Capital Financial Global Incorporated. Probably the reason for the little bit of action that we're getting. Up 26.4%, almost a million shares of trade so far today. And as I mentioned, they got that mining operation into woodwork too. Borium Group, almost 600,000 in volume now. Last trade at 0051, up 6.2%. Got about 300,000 sitting here on 005 support. I got uh, MetaSafe, MFTH, hitting the scanner here. Any uh, Anything on that there, Haas? Chart looks decent. You've had a consolidation pattern. You see this thing get some nice little pops up to that 1, 2, 1, 5 area. We're currently at 0, 0, 0052 by 0, 0, 006. Yeah, MetaSafe 1 Technologies. Pretty low volume so far today. We got 187,000 traded so far. Uh, not a huge fan of the spread, 0052 by 006. I know this one puts out tons of news, though. Let's check that. Is that I your wanted... dog drinking water in the background? Oh, yeah, he's getting it. I wanted yeah, to bring she's up sucking it up now, boys. Apple. After such a... Uh, you know, big day in the markets yesterday. You, sh you should expect a little bit of a pullback. And I wanted to look at Apple uh, puts. And I'm looking at the uh, 585 puts. They were as low as 298 this morning. And they're up to 4 bucks, uh, 380 by 390 right now, actually. So uh, 
that was one that I wanted to take a look at. Let's let's see what uh, some of the other puts are doing here. Siffy, were there, were there any Apple? Uh, I got stopped put? out of my 600 call. Yeah, see, I would think after uh, such a well, you know the story call. on the 600 it's... call. Uh, but uh, yep, took my took my lickings there, took a little hit. But um, you're looking here now at the the strikes, and uh, you can see Apple 587, 51, 66, yada yada. If you're Hey, dog, enough. I don't know why these dogs love making so much noise whenever I go to talk. They're perfectly silent when you guys are doing your thing. Anyways, <laughs> if you're looking at the puts, if you're, a, if you're a bear and you're thinking by Friday, now these are weeklies I'm looking at, so they expire on Friday. Anyways, if you're, if you're bearish and you're thinking the market's going down, you can take a speculation. you got your 580 trading at uh, 213, 216 by 220. Got that 585 at 375 by 385. So let's do some pricing here. Let's say, uh, let's just say speculatively, you buy that 580 right now for uh, two dollars and twenty cents, and then let's say Apple trades down to 575. So you're five dollars in the money. So you're looking at at least a hundred percent gain right there because that thing would be worth at least five bucks from this 223 plus the premium on it. So. Uh, Keep that in mind. Always do your pricing before you hop into these things, because they might got if they've got you know a lot of premium in them. You can see your price per share moving in the direction you want, and your options stalling and losing value, and you're sitting there just pulling your hair out, wondering why, why, why. But that's why. Price them, boys. Price them. What else do we got? Anything uh, running in the OTC? What's hitting the scanner over here? CFGX. That's Charlie, Frank, George, X-Ray, Capital Financial. Oh, I just pulled a SIFI right there. You guys talked about that earlier. No, yeah, that's, one, uh, that's an interesting one. 013. Last traded 013, up 27%. 942,000 in volume. No, that's good stuff. Um, that uh, MFTH SIFI, that one that you mentioned, it is low volume. It's kind of interesting, though. They uh, commenced a $1 million share buyback program, up to $0.10 cents a share, supposedly, uh, just uh, about a week ago. So probably some speculation going on with that and stuff, if you like that chart. Kager trying to bust through this 0015 area. Not a whole lot there. A few million sitting on 0015. Got about... Five six hundred thousand sitting on double zero one four. So trying to truck back upwards. Double zero one five is the high of day. UBRG wow. still sitting with that. What? What do you got, man? PDGO is huge bidder at double zero eight. They just took out the bids and there's a big spread it's 008 by 009 but look at that bid at 008 3 million shares there at 008 3 3,071,500 so a lot of support there at 008 the offers look relatively thin they had it up as high as 013 this morning so a little consolidation here Healthy trading. WBSI has three market makers on the offer at 031. There's a bit of resistance there. Van Dam has been on the offer. Uh, need to see him get off the offer. Man, I'm trying to find a runner from some of this news that we got going on. It's not working. We got any other boom scanners going on, Seth? We're dying out here. We're dying. We're hanging Sefie's, on the vine. Sefi's hitting my scanner. It's at 39 by 39.5. Had a low of 36. It's Don't hitting its 20-day it. moving average right now. Let's check this one out. Um, you can see this is a daily chart here. Hitting that 20 MA. So it's hitting resistance, but you can also see that MACD and that slow stow is looking pretty solid. 
I mean, damn, this thing was uh, over two dollars and seventy some odd cents, even higher. But um, keep your eye on that if it could get through that twenty MA. Of course, we want to see it confirmed with volume. This could be good. You can see it found that bottom, you know, two days ago, and yesterday it was confirmed with volume. So you're trading up another <clears throat> uh, thirteen percent here. So yep. Nice man. Siffy. Siffy. Uh, Siffy, it's kinda like your name. I think that's why you like it. Uh those are that's one of those plays where I don't know. Just I a just lot of talk that's one of those plays point. where there's a lot of bag holders. <laughs> well, that, Holy that's, cow, that's speaking true. of speaking of bag holders, I was just <laughs> doing a s I was doing a scan. Look at this fofu. Oh tofu? ugly. F O F U. F O F U. Full yeah, it's down to it's down a hundred percent today, ninety eight percent. Only thirty two thousand shares trade. Last trade quad one. Oh, wow. I thought I, I remember some group was on this a while back. I don't I don't remember which group it was, but man, they must have left a lot of bag holders here. <laughs> that's that's a sad story there, bro. Yeah. Other big percentage losers today. You got I R C E. Indigo, Robert, Charlie, Eddie, down to double oh one one. It's down forty five percent on five hundred thousand shares traded. Look at this beast, M Y O S. How come this thing didn't hit the scanner three weeks ago? Maybe it did, but um, man, it's up again today. But look at this chart; it's just been going straight up. Forty six by forty seven. Put that on the top chart. What's ICPA doing today? Ooh, look at that on a daily, guys. It's sitting there on its 50 MA. Key support right here. Oh, PDGO is getting ready to get jiggy. Jiggy. <laughs> they dipped it down. Is, is it just me or any time I bring up a ticker, Sumo grabs a new one? <laughs> well, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, he does that a lot. That's fine. As long as he's got a hot ticker, yeah, I'll forgive him. Just, just bring me a winner. <laughs> what? Which one did you mention, Siffy? I had I to uh, I turn my headphones off for a second. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going. There was to one that we were to looking at. Screen. I want to see what he's looking at. Siffy, there was there was one we were looking at for a pullback recently. Uh, well, what was it? We were looking for it to come down. Oh, Yippy! What's Yippy doing? Yippy! Yippy took a massive, massive dip. Again. Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at it today. Let's check it out on level two. Yippee's down 7.45%. 62 cents. Yeah, this one took a major, major, major dip. I think there's some uh, pretty crappy rumors that were uh, spread once it was up in that $2 range and it took a massive dip. It's back down at 60 cents here. I'm not sure what uh, it actually started bouncing off of. It was actually lower than that. I think it was near 50 cents again and started creeping back up the last two trading days or so and now it's just kind of sitting here right now pdgo pdgo coming up to a resistance point here at 013 that was the high of day if it can kick through this resistance here could continue to get interesting wbsi broke its resistance up to 032 now uh, Van Dam moved to 0324. Got to keep an eye out on him. All right, PDGO's dipping again. They, they're keeping the spread uh, kind of goofy here. Hey, here's a piece of crap we warned some people about. Coin down 26%. 0088 by 0089. I was going to introduce that as Sippy's favorite company, Coin, yeah. making a big run yesterday again. Flipper's Paradise. Making some more bag holders raping the investment community blind and no doubt huh siffy you're you're a seffy still beast and just hit 42 cents nice little hit there oh, 42 cents volume. trying to get through this 20 ma we'll see we'll see well, obviously I wouldn't doubt uh, if you're day trading it, you want to want to be looking at this daily like i'm looking at you'd want to pull up your five maybe your 15 your 60 minute chart but uh, I just like looking at these dailies as we're going through the scanner, kind of give you an idea of what the hell's going on. Oh, heck yeah. But, um, oh, heck yeah. 
CRGC, it's a 12 times average daily volume, 21.5 by 22, had a low of 20 cents. You can see here on the chart, it's had quite a consolidation through this area and it's hitting that 100 MA as we speak. It actually just kissed it and pulled back a, a hair. So keep your eye on this one, 12 times average volume. Do, did we look at this one already? We got news on this? No, we didn't look at that one. It was hitting my scanner earlier. I wanted to mention it. I'm glad you brought it up. Ha, so what yeah, you got, they do, man? They do have, yeah, they do have news. Let's check it here. Um, they must be affiliated with Pershing Gold Corp in some way, shape, or form. Hold on. Pershing Gold Corp is pleased to announce that Cordelin Mines Corporation... CDM on the Toronto Stock Exchange has purchased 10 million shares of Pershing Gold. How is this affiliated with us? I'm not exactly sure why this is a CRGC press release, Continental Resource Group, unless they own either. I don't know, man. I give up. Good enough for me. Here's one hit my scanner that I... <laughs> I give up. Good I, I got to throw you. this one out there because I made a killing on this back in the day, man. Is LBSR. I haven't seen it for a while, but um, it just crossed through its 50 MA. And uh, you can see it actually crossed through it yesterday and held it. And today it's trying to move up higher. It's up another 2.29%. I don't know what, uh, what the deal is here, but... Um, Obviously, you're gonna to have to radar that uh, that 100 MA up above it as your next resistance and uh, your 50 and your 20 as support. Plus, you got yesterday's candle. You can see it came down and kissed that and held yesterday's close and is trying to head higher. So, just want to throw that one out there because that thing, when it goes, it goes. Holy cow! Big bitters on PDGO. We're about to break the high of day here. Watch her go. Watch her go. It's so easy to read these level twos. Look at that bid for three million at 012 now. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice spotlight there, Haas. Sorry, man. I one just, four. Uh, On deck. Got a knack. Baby. Got a knack. Got a knack. Got a knack like for winners. Higher. Boom! There's your one four. Eighty-one point eight two percent. Man, you know, it's raining cats and dogs over here. We got is, a uh, swell. We got multi baggers. Um, STT radio bringing it to you daily, even if uh, we lose connection here and there. I didn't lose connection though. Uh, Siffy was uh, <laughs> solid this morning. <laughs> PDGO is cranking up. The volume is rolling through. Come on, let's and... clear E Trade out of there. Show me Sunar at one five, baby. Let's go. Next See resistance e comes at two cents. Get out of there, E Trade. R E N U is up to double oh four. We are pounding the table on this one for R a couple of weeks. E N U. Yeah, yep. I remember that one. Is that thing still up or down from where? It's, it's it has been trading light volume, and it's getting ready to uh, make a move here, it looks like, because they took it down to 0016 the other day. Uh, Haas and I were watching the level two, and it was just funny. The market makers painted the chart down. The, the bids were higher than 0016, yet they squinked the trade off at 0016. So Squeakers. how they did that, I don't know. It was just an ugly paint on the chart, but I think it was just some MM manipulation. And uh, that was kind of the signal that the, the bottom was set in and it's getting ready to start upticking. And sure enough, the past couple of days, we've seen it start to thin out. And really, you know, it can move pretty easily. You could look at the chart and go back and see that RENU has had some nice moves in the past. So I had to throw this one up here because I was looking at the chart pre-market. Didn't get a ch uh, chance to talk about it when you guys were talking about... Uh golfing but just want to throw it up there molly corp mcp one of our Ooh. favorite rare earth uh miners we all know the whole rare earth story but this thing is just cranking right now it's at 2257 and just heading north in a hurry up uh 9.44 percent 9.63 percent and you can just see this volume's just hounding her i don't know what the deal is here if uh there's some news out of China or 
dollars taking a beat in or what the deal is have to check some of the other rare earth miners but uh she's going nuts right now I don't want to pull the trigger right here but she's going nuts looks like you got a little pullback here on uh that pdgo saw knight join the party there at that 145 e-trade stepped off back to 148 there we go get back up there oh she's gonna roll new through, high, man. New, I'm not new too high day there but uh Got that little spread, one three to one four five. What do you what do you make of that when you see that, Sumo? Give me some of your level two expertise. Well, definitely want to see the spread tighten up. There, you want to see a tight bid and ask. That always shows strength. Right now, it's oh one three by oh one four. I'd like to see an oh one three five or better on the bid. Um, but you got two bidders and two uh, just one offer, so it's it's you know pretty even on both sides. And, uh, you know, after such a high run from 0093 to 0145, you got to expect a little consolidation. These things just don't shoot up and go straight up like a missile. they got to uh, have some consolidation before they can break through the next high. So we'll, we'll just keep an eye on it. We just want to look for higher highs and higher lows. The, they pulled it back to 0093 this morning. If it pulls back here, I just want to see it hold over a penny. And that'll be a higher low for the day. And uh, you know, on the daily chart, you want to just see those higher highs and higher lows, and you'll be running with the bulls. Running with the bulls. Good deal. Have to throw out my bag here again since uh, it's getting a little bit of love and it's trying to move up more. Is a UCHC. Yes, I'm a shareholder, and yes, I'm almost in the green, baby. But uh, yeah, it's only had 25 trades. Still light volume. We'll see what's going on here, though. Had a couple people post about it and send me a couple private messages. And, uh, yeah, you know, I threw the chart up there, did a little post, and you can see that 50 EMA on the chart I threw up on our board. We need to move through that, and I want to see it with some volume. So keep your eyes on it. You see HC. Haas went over the news yesterday. It ain't doing too much today, so I'm holding my breath. You guys got anything w else cracking out there? WBSI continues to uptick. It looks like Van Dam is playing friendly. He just moved to 033 on the ask. Currently, the offer is 0329 by LAFC. Uh, the bid is 0325, so it's got a nice tight spread. Decent volume on 1.6 million shares. Look at Vert staying high bidder now, 0328. So it's good to see Vert on the bid. It's all about Van Dam, though. He seems to be controlling the ask. He's a, a you know, we look for these V brothers, the Van Dam, V Finn, and uh, Vert. Those are the three. If we see them on the offer, you know, they, if as long as they play ball and they let it go up and they move back, then you know that's what you. Boom! Want I'm calling a sumo here, jumping in and interrupting you, sumo for Usi because I just keep seeing people talk about oh buy the dip, buy the dip. I've heard this for four days in a row. Why are you guys buying the dip when you're in between a 20 and a 50 MA? Pull up your daily. Do not believe the hype. It was a great interview. I don't know too much about the company, but listen to me, all right? Now is where you'd be buying a dip when this thing's kissing a 50 MA and put your stop tight. Come on, people. Let's think about this. Do not believe anybody that keeps telling you do this, do that. This thing keeps going down. It's down another 35%. You're not adding to a winner. You're adding to a loser. Pick your spot, your entry. I had to throw that in there because this is making yeah. me sick. Absolutely I love sick. It. How do you sleep with I yourselves at night when you keep telling people to buy it? Hello. Anyways, we've had a great show. We're going to wrap it on that note, peeps. Aloha. Better keep up on PDGO. I love it when Siffy gets animated about his charts. Cheers, people. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. All views and topics talked about on Stock Traders Talk Radio is solely for entertainment purposes. We are not professional financial advisors and always recommend you seek the advice of a professional financial advisor. Never invest in any stock featured on our show unless you can afford to lose your entire investment. The information contained on our show is based on sources which we believe to be reliable, but is not guaranteed by us as being accurate, and might not be a complete statement or summary of the available data. Stock Traders Talk Radio advises that the investments in companies profiled are commonly considered to be high risk 
and use of the information provided is at the investor's sole risk. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio.